On this podcast, we're talking Memorial, the Golden Bear, and details of our exclusive secret golf giveaway. It's secret golf. It's what I'm looking for. It's secret golf with Elk and Noxie, the podcast. Hey, I hope you're doing great, having a good week. Well, it's been a very exciting week for us here at Secret Golf, and I'm going to tell you why in just a little while. I mean, exciting for me, but even more exciting for you. Anyway, right, we've got a big giveaway going on, and the details are coming up soon. So on this podcast, we're going to talk about that. Also, it is the Memorial Tournament this week on the PGA Tour, Jack Nicholas's tournament. So we'll be talking about that, our Secret Golf guys, the Golden and Bear himself. And also it's major week for the girls, the US Women's Open at Shoal Creek in Alabama. Now we have five of our secret golf ladies taking part. Brittany Lang, who actually won it in 2016. Brittany Lincecum, Stacey Lewis, Gabby Lopez and our newest signing, Sandra Gall. So good luck to all of our girls. It's such a shame though, because the weather's been pretty bad and they actually had to cancel all of the practice rounds on Wednesday. Uh, Imagine going into the major without being able to practice the day before. But never mind, the girls are going to be going for it tomorrow. So um, yeah, excited. I love it. It's such a great tournament to watch. So Elk's going to be here soon and we're going to be talking about Jack Nicholas a lot today. He's Elk's idol, his complete hero in, I was going to say in the golfing world, but maybe just in life. So Elk's going to be talking about Jack, um, you know, some of his favourite stories about Jack Nicholas. also looking at his swing, his career, really everything. The Memorial Tournament is definitely one of the highlights of the PGA Tour season and it's an event that the guys really do look forward to. Last year it was won by our very own Jason Duffner. So we'll be talking about Duff as well, you know, he was born in Ohio, Jack Nicholas born in Ohio too. So this is definitely a tournament that's got Duff feeling great, especially Especially last year, he opened with 65-65, 14 under after two days. Now, because that happened last year, we celebrated here at Secret Golf with an exclusive tune. If you are familiar with Secret Golf, if you follow us on social media, you'll know about this already. But also our TV shows that we did, there was always tunes. Now, Elk himself is a very talented artist. He loves to draw. And we have another guy that is our Secret Golf cartoonist called Calder Chisholm. Calder is unbelievably talented. Most of the tunes are actually drawn by Calder, but they're the brainchild of Elk and the two of them work really well together to create these tunes. So the giveaway this week is two posters and it's of Jason Duffner and Jack Nicholas. Now, the first one is after Duff shot the 14 under after two days and it's Jack being like, damn it, Duff. Because Jack, of course, tries to make this a difficult tournament for the guys and he wants it to be a real challenge at Muirfield Village. So that was our first tune. And then the second one is after Duff won and it's Jack actually giving Duff the trophy. And we're, we're calling Duffner the kind of new old school. And there's loads of different points about Duffner. If you haven't seen the tunes already, if you go on our Twitter, Instagram or Facebook, then you can see them there because you could be winning them. We have two to give away this week. Now, only five of these were made. Elk's got one, Duff's got one, Jack's got one, and then the final two that we're giving away this week. Best bit about it is we got them signed by Jason Duffner and Jack Nicholas. Imagine having something signed by Mr. Nicholas. I have them in front of me right now and I'm so scared that something's going to happen to them. Well, it won't because I'm taking very good care of them. Anyway, details on how you can enter on all of our social media channels, but I'll tell you about it in a little while. But on this podcast today, I wanted to first of all talk Talk about these incredible tunes and the process behind them. So I, I told you about him earlier. Calder Chisholm is our resident secret golf cartoonist and he's on the phone right now. Calder, how are you? I'm fine, Diane. Thanks for having me on the show. It's Thank an honour. Oh, well, no, the honour is all mine. You're the man of the moment this week because obviously we're giving away these Duffner and Jack tunes that you created. We're going to talk about that in a little while, but I want to go all the way back to the beginning. You're an incredible artist. How did you get into drawing like back in the early days? Wow. Uh, well, way back in the early days before phones, <laughs> you had to sort of uh, entertain yourself with 
pencils and paper and scribbling. And I used to do that a lot when I was a kid, um, kind of got out of it, uh, in high school, but got back into it in college. Uh, when I saw the school newspaper, um, cartoonist, uh, you know, there, there was a cartoon in there and it was just awful. <laughs> and I, I, I went marching right into the office and just said, listen, this is no good. I gotta, I gotta step in here. And they're like, great, let's see what you got. So it started there. Um, <clears throat> where I drew editorial cartoons, uh, for them and, uh, and a comic strip that was pretty popular. And then, uh, after college, I drew for a couple local papers, um, followed my old editor around, did another stint up at the Moscow Pullman daily news in cool. Moscow, Idaho. There's a shout out. <laughs> and while I was up there, I got published, uh, in, the New York Times and the Washington Post, the USA wow. Today. Uh, so that was kind of the gig for a while. Um, and then uh, started, did the old, you know, start the family, get a regular job, and uh, kind of just did it uh, on the side for fun here and there. Um, and that was sort of where I was at when I, uh, when I had my fateful meeting with Elk. Oh, so tell me about that meeting. How did you guys actually connect in the first place? Well, I have a, a former brother-in-law, Scott McCarran. He's on the Champs Tour right now. Oh, right. Uh, and and uh, he would sort of be the unofficial host of the PGA Tour event we have here in Reno, the, the Barracuda Championship now. It used to be the Reno Tahoe Open. And, uh, <clears throat> he had, uh, hosted a player party and Elk came to that. I think this was back in 2006. And, uh, you know, we had a couple of, couple of sodas and hit it off. And he said, uh, oh, I'm a cartoonist too, mate. That's a very good impression and, of him. Uh, very good. Uh, for years. <laughs> and, uh. I actually still have the, you know, we, we sat outside and just actually started scribbling wow. right there at the party. And, uh, I actually still have a framed copy of the, the drawing you did for me right there on the spot. That is amazing. Um, That's a great story. Yeah. He's, he's quite a good cartoonist. I'm, I'm a big fan of his style. And of course he's one of the funniest people on the planet. So that's sort of where it started. And, uh, in the next few years after that, uh, he would come back to Reno to play in that event and we'd get together and we'd talk about projects and cartooning and, and eventually it ended up being, uh, a regular gig with, uh, Secret Golf. Uh, anyone that's followed Secret Golf from the beginning when it was, you know, Secret in the Dirt way back when, the tunes have always been a really prominent feature. And, you know, you, you've been working with him and with Secret Golf since the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it used to start out as a weekly conference call with just about four or five of us. And uh, we'd sit there and hash out some ideas about getting this golf social network up and running. And, and while we were doing that, it, part of the content was... Uh, cartoons almost daily yeah even when we did the tv show when i first joined secret golf a huge part of actually making the show is we'd go out and film it then we'd come back and we'd edit stuff and we always had to think you know how could we enhance this with a tune and we would probably send you the craziest suggestions of things and be like okay go and create that <laughs> and you would do it every single time and it really just adds so much to to everything that we've done at secret golf i love being part of it but as you say, you know, and anyone that's followed Elk from the early days, especially on social media, he does draw himself a lot. You know, some of the stuff that he puts together, those tunes are, are fabulous. So I want to know a little bit about the creative process. If he has an idea or you have an idea, how do the two of you come together and create that, that final product? It goes exactly like this, where he will text me at... 5 a.m. my time. <laughs> and the exact words are, are you moving? <laughs> and I will 
respond with yes, and I he will heard. respond with call village. <laughs> so that's that's how we start our meetings. And oh. uh, then we get on the phone and just sit there for probably 15, 20 minutes okay. uh, going back and forth. And honestly, uh, a good 80 to 90 percent of the content is all coming out of Elk's brain. He's extremely funny. He's obviously got, you know, unmatched insight into the tour and what matters um, subject wise. You know, I've got my own ideas that sometimes don't really, you know, I think they're funny, but does anybody else? <laughs> uh, so when he and I get to talk and the cartoons that you see are generally um, an elk directed topic and all the way down to the tiniest detail. I mean, this, this week with the memorial, you know, one of our favorite um, themes is old school, new school, comparing mm -hmm the greats of the 60s and 70s, you know, the our forefathers to, you know, some of the more cliche uh, caricatures of today. And that's one of our favorite cartoons is, is comparing, uh, you know, the goat to a, a typical, you know, journeyman pro today. Yeah. So we, we just sit and talk and he, you know, I, I take notes while we're, you know, we have a good laugh that can go longer. And then we just sort of abruptly hang up the phone and I start scribbling and I'll send him a rough and he'll, he'll either respond with boom, which is usually a, a good thing. <laughs> Every once in a while I get a missed cut. Oh, really? <laughs> which wow. means those are rare, you know, because <laughs> those are usually when I went off on a tangent, but, uh, Anyway, we did. We just have a really good time with it because uh, you know it, we've been doing it so long. We've been doing it for almost at least eight years now, mm -hmm. and we're down to a, where we don't even have to say that much. It's just sort of a, you know, you get the idea, you get the gist, you got the gist, mate. I'll let you go. <laughs> click, and then I start drawing, send it to him, and he'll just fire back. Bingo! Boom. The thing is, is that you guys know each other so well now. And when you first met, it was obviously not just your love of drawing that kind of brought you guys together, but personality as well. And the two of you getting on well. So I'm sure you can you can kind of go with it a little bit and throw out suggestions knowing that he's going to go for it. Yes, uh, I consider Elk uh, not just a, a very good friend, but. Uh, in a way, kind of a mentor. I mean, he, <clears throat> when I first met him, you know, you, you sort of get the the fan worship of a tour legend, and then you find out that he's just this great, great guy that loves telling stories, loves being around people. He likes being around uh, people with talent in whatever it is. You know, he's he's just very interested in 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 people and their and they're, I don't want to say gift, but you know, he, that, that's the kind of thing that interests him, whatever it is, if you're a musician, you know, he's got all sorts of musician friends, mm -hmm. whatever he's, he just loves being around people. And he is a fantastic friend. He's very funny. Um, and yes, we, we have similar sense of humor, but uh, you know, uh, and aside from him, more or less pulling me out of, uh, just my casual hobbyist cartooning yeah. uh, state where he pulled me in to secret golf to where it was a daily thing. And, you know, I wouldn't be half as good or I wouldn't be half as uh, prolific without him. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I owe him a lot Aww. and it is, it is really fun. And, and, Anybody that gets a chance to talk to him, I mean, the accent is one thing, but just the, some of the phrases he comes up with, <laughs> some can't be repeated on a podcast, but or I suppose they can. But I, I literally, every time he calls me, I have a pen in my hand to take notes in case there's a new phrase that 
I had not heard before. And I just start laughing and I go, hang on a second. I got to write that one down. That is so funny. Now, obviously, we have a, a lot of golfers now on our secret golf roster. And every time we sign a new one, th there seems to be in my inbox or whatever in the secret golf virtual world, I'll see their face pop up in tune form. So you've had to draw many golfers over the year. Who would you say is your favorite out of all the secret golf guys and girls to draw? Well, um, yeah, that's usually... Uh when I see one of our golfers on the leaderboard, that means I'm going to be working the week, the weekend. <laughs> Great. Um, it, it's, it's wonderful to see how well they're doing. For sure. Um, if I had to go down the roster, obviously Duff is a favorite. He's got a great mug. He's got a very good personality. I mean, you'll, yeah. you'll notice that's, that's who Elk gravitates to people exactly. that actually have personality robots um and duff's fantastic i mean he's got got uh, a dad bod which i appreciate i can definitely sympathize Emily. with that <laughs> you know it's it's easier to draw somebody that's shapely mm -hmm. and has a good mug than it is to just draw some as elk would call them flat belly which i know we've got we've got those two we've but, got some uh, of those too yeah uh it, it's a challenge sometimes but uh you know and you go through two or three drafts and be like that doesn't look anything like him throw it away start over turn the page turn yeah. the piece of paper over do it again the thing about duff is and we're going to talk about his tunes that we've got to give away this week but with duffner's personality he laughs at himself him and elk get on very well they're really really good friends and you know one of the tunes we have as you say duffner's got like a, a dad bod he's he's got a body that's very relatable to a lot of guys out there. And people that's say right. to us, you guys draw the gut on Duff. We're like, well, we're not going to do a representation of him that looks nothing like him. And Duff loves it. You know, he knows that we're completely on his side. We're on his team. And he he loves it. He laughs at it. Yeah. I mean, he's he doesn't take himself very seriously. And that's mm -hmm. that's a very good thing. Uh, these days and you know one man's gut is uh, another man's slingshot power that's what <laughs> that's what Elk calls it that's just you know that's just part of being a good golfer power. you need that extra weight port there to exactly get, get ultimate smash so we're giving away these two tunes this week and you created them with Elk after Duff won Memorial last year so I know that you created five in total and Elk's got one, Duff's got one, Jack's got one. And then we've got these two signed by the guys to give away this week. So are all five of them different? Well, they're, um, there's there's two originals. The the two that we did, I mean, I've, I've done so many Duff cartoons, I've lost track. But okay. specifically for last year's memorial, we did that one of him, uh, I think, through a round or two where he was just sort of in the slot and he was leading the tournament. Uh, and then we did one of him winning where Jack presents him with the trophy. Mm -hmm. um, and then we made a limited edition uh, prints of those that we sent out and had uh, Duff and, and uh, Mr. Nicholas sign. Amazing. I'm just going to interrupt very quickly. I just got a text from Elk right now just saying, you want to talk to me? <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, I do. But in a few minutes. <laughs> Um, right, so we'll talk about these. How long? Did, my favorite one is the new old school. So this is the one where Duff actually won, and in the tune, Jack's presenting him with the trophy, and you've kind of highlighted some characteristics of Duff. How long did it take you to actually do this tune? Um, again, the the getting Duff's expression is no easy task. <laughs> what expression? Because it's a moving target. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've I really do try to get it right. Um well, this one is I mean, perfect. Just, a, a, every time I see a picture of Duff, I do a screen capture of it and just try to keep it on hand for okay. future reference. But uh that was uh again, that was a call with Elk where we, you know, got on the phone and talked about details. So, uh, so all the descriptions surrounding Duff are pretty much elk right out of right out of his coconut. 
So we have things and like um, gut overhang, then in brackets, zero Fs given. <laughs> yes, which is a, a phrase that uh, our our boy Pat Perez popularized. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and of course, they're really good friends as well. Um, yeah. There's classic FJs, the foot joys, big heel, um, Ohio yep. born, because not a lot of people actually knew that, that Duff was born in Ohio. And then, of course, one memorial there. But mm-hmm. I love the Jack tune as well, because Jack obviously being the goat, what a great person to be able to draw. And you just got it completely bang on. Well, thank you very much. Bang on is bang on is good, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want to write that down in your little phrase book? <laughs> I'm going to write that. And I hope I get a, uh, you know, a good Scottish phrase that I can take with me to okay. uh, to my people. OK, I'll have to think of one. Definitely. When we're done. Hod your beast was the last one I got hod, no, hod quite a while beast. ago. I know. I'll, I'll hod some your beast. Yeah. Oh, you're see, you're very good at accents. Your talent's not limited to drawing, Calder. It's, uh, yeah, five-tool player. <laughs> and then our other tune that we're giving away, as you said, because when um, Duff played Thursday and Friday of Memorial last year, he went 65-65. And Jack's always said that he wants to make that course a real challenge for the guys. So this is one you created after um, that heading into the weekend. And it's Jack saying 14 under, damn it, Duff. And then Duff standing there, yep. kind of the shoe up, almost like tweaking the spike with the wink on his face. And it's just brilliant. It just captures such a fantastic tournament for him. Obviously, we're celebrating the fact that he got the win. And they've both been signed by Duff and Jack. You must, I mean, I would get an absolute thrill out of seeing that. Something that I've done. Jack Nicholas has signed it. Oh, yeah. I mean, can I enter the contest? I know. I was going to say. Do you have one? (laughs) I, I want one signed by the GOAT. Oh, too right. I know. I, do you know when they arrived the other day, I thought, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do with these? I couldn't leave them in the office because I thought I can't leave them unattended. They need to be like with me all the time. And I didn't even trust myself. So I gave them to my mum to keep them over Memorial Weekend. <laughs> Smart. Smart. Oh, had to do it. Had to do it. Right. Thank you so much, Calder. Obviously, we're giving away these amazing tunes and these are going to be in someone's house or wherever the winner chooses to put them for many, many years to come. Um, Thank you for creating them. Thank you for giving them to us to give away this week. And I can't wait to see what else you're going to come up with in the future. It's it's a it's very fun and I'm I'm glad to be able to do it. I'm really lucky and uh, Glad to be a part of the secret golf team. Yes, it's a good team. <laughs> right, well, yes. I better go. Um, I better text Elk back now because when he says he wants to talk to you, he wants to talk to you that second. So we'll get him on the phone and we'll have a little chat about the tunes as well. Yeah, he he blew me up just this morning and we uh, did another Jack uh, update, a revision. He'll be texting that one or tweeting that one out shortly if he hasn't already. We'll check them all out on Twitter. Right, Calder, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, you're doing a great job. It's great. Love listening to you. Well, you have a good day at work. Enjoy the real job. The proper job. The proper job, yes. (laughs) Take care. So we spoke to Calder, who's our secret golf cartoonist and actually created the tunes that we're giving away this week of Duff and Jack. But we all know where the initial idea comes from. And, well, he's the most creative person at Secret Golf. It was his idea in the first place. Elk, how are you? Good morning, Diane. Yeah, I um, I probably enjoy my time working with Calder Chisholm as much as anything that I do in my life. I'm a, I'm a diehard cartoonist. I learned. I learned how to do cartoons myself as a kid from a famous cartoonist, one of the most famous cartoonists in the world from Australia. is named Tony Rafferty. Wow. And Tony Rafferty um, was so famous. He won the uh, Independent Cartoonist Award uh, in the world a, a lot of times because he would draw uh, cartoons straight from the face. In other words, he would live. He wouldn't do it from a picture. Anyway, um, if you can believe it, Calder... As good as he is, I kind of mentored him to be a cartoonist. Uh, can you imagine that he's a million times better than 
anyone I've ever seen, and I'm mentoring him to be a cartoonist. Wow. Can you imagine that? But he did say, that's interesting that you say, you know, you take it from the live face because Calder said that he actually, we were talking about Duff, and he was like, if I see him playing golf over the weekend, I will screenshot things all the time of him actually moving so I get that kind of real-life expression on his face. Yeah, I mean, it's just such a rare talent. Um, I can't do I can't recreate the tunes with the, like Calder does with the face, uh, the way he does it makes them lifelike. I'm, I'm more, I can draw uh, characters like uh, my own, my own cartoon characters all day long, but he, he's able to uncannily get the, get the, uh, the likeness just right. Right. Let's talk about the tunes that we're giving away this week because you FedEx them to me last week. And do you know, I was so, I didn't tell you this at the time. I was so scared to have these in my possession that I gave them to my mum to keep over the weekend at her house. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're celebrating uh, two tunes this week. One is, of course, the first one is when Jason Duffner um, shot 14 under for two days at the, at the Memorial Tournament, which is really uh, disheartening for Jack Nicholas, And we tried to portray that in the first tune because Jack Nicholas, as you know, he, he's very proud of Muirfield Village, his course. And for those guys to come up there, or in this case, Jason Duffner to shred his course 14 under in two days was a bit disheartening for him. So that was the first one that we're giving away this week. There's only five of these. Uh, I have one, Jason has one, and Jack Nicholas has one. So this is the only other one that we're going to do, one of five. The second tune, of course, is we have a we have a um, uh, a series, if you will, of old school, new school, and you'll see them on Secret Golf a lot this week. Where uh, by popular demand, I am people say, put up the old school, new school again, mm -hmm. and um, and what we're doing is we're highlighting all the cool things that we used to do in the old days, like slingshot power from the gut and all this stuff, cigarette pocket and all these different things, and we're we're. Uh, we're, uh, you know, contrasting that against some of the modern players that are wearing all the the, the, the bling, if you will. But this one, uh, the second cartoon that we're doing this week is, of course, Jason's vic victory uh, last year at the Memorial. And, and, of course, Jack has signed them both, and so has oh. Jason. So very collectible. How did you get Jack's signature? Like, did you have to send them to him, or what was that process? Yeah, I think Jason, I sent them to Jason. I said, why don't you get Nicholas? I think he was going to like a Ryder Cup or a President's Cup meeting and Nicholas was there. And I said, why don't you take these along? And of course, Jack, Jack's seen our tunes many times and he gets a, he gets a real kick out of uh, mm -hmm. what we do with him. He goes, it's, you guys, you know, just having fun and, and it's great. Cartoons are lost, you know, you don't see many cartoons anymore. I mean, we all grew up with them. At least people of uh, my age, Diane, I'm sure you, you're not old enough. You're, you're old enough to know there was good cartoons when you were younger. <laughs> I thought you were going to pay me a really good compliment and make me feel 21 <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, um, you know, aside from anything else, and let's go back to basics here, because Jack Nicholas is your idol. He's your hero in life. And... I, I don't know. I look at it. I've been with you before when you've seen Jack when we were at the Masters this year. You must pinch yourself every time you see him and be like, he knows who I am. Well, of course, you know, we, uh, well, I say, of course, I've been knowing Jack, I suppose now for 45 years or 40 something years when he first came to Australia in 1976 to play in the Australian Open. And uh, as kids living in the country, we didn't have TV, we didn't have a phone, so we had heard on the radio that he had signed up to play, and we bought our train tickets. We were going to go to Sydney and uh, follow Jack Nicholas in the 1976 US uh, Australian Open on a course that he designed mm -hmm. uh, called the Australian. And we found out by radio um, that when he arrived in Australia, he was on the Barrier Reef, and he had hooked this 1,480-pound black marlin and fought it for like seven hours and he'd strained all the muscles in his back and he wasn't going to play. It wasn't, didn't know if he could play the Australian open. And we were sort of all devastated, but we decided to take our train trip down there and, and see all the golfers anyway. And, um, Jack indeed showed up in 76 and his first shot on the tournament, uh, Diane, he topped his first tee shot down the fairway in the 76 Australian open. Of course he went on to win by five strokes, but wow. if you ever lucky enough to talk to Jack Nicholas to this, on this day, he will tell you the story of the 1,480-pound black marlin that sits prominently in his house today down in Lost Creek in Florida, and he just loves that story, and I do too. Can you remember the first time you ever met him and came face-to-face -face with him? 
yeah, there was that year I was on the driving range giving out golf balls, uh, and I had he was using a particular kind of ball back then, and uh, I had his hit off to the side. So when he showed up, I walked over and put them down for him, and he told he looked at I got his autograph, and um, he told me I looked like a golfer. So oh, that was wow. enough for me, Diane. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. And then what about when you actually became a professional golfer and you joined the tour? Can you remember your first experience of meeting him in that world? Uh, I do, of course. Uh, I, I knew his kids very well in college. His son, Jack Jackie Jr., went to North Carolina University. And he was on the same team as Davis Love. And then his daughter went to University of Texas and was friends with some of my friends over there. And then, of course, Gary Nicholas came along. Uh, who went to Ohio State, and his other son, Steve Nicholas. I have a very unique um, story about Steve Nicholas in 1986, the year that Jack won the Masters when he was 46. Um, Steve Nicholas was working in, in production at a – back then when the tour played at Augusta, they used to have another tournament at a different location for all of us guys that didn't get in the Masters, and it was in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and I had just finished my round, and there was a story going around the course that Jack Nicholas was making a run in the 86 Masters. So I ran inside, and I ran into Steve Nicholas, his son, and we sat down together and watched the back nine together of, wow. of him watching his dad and his brother caddy in for the 86 Masters. So that was great. Wow. That was a great memory I had. And, uh, of course, I got to play with Jack many times on the tour, um, you know, playing with him was always a little bit nerve wracking. But as I got as I got better and older, um, you know, I uh, was able to <laughs> I was able to perform a little bit better. But he knows he knows that I'm his that he's my favorite player, and and uh, and uh, I just think that's fantastic. Has he ever watched you and given you any advice? Has he ever kind of commented on your game or especially your swing? He has. Uh, in fact. Uh, I never did that well at the Memorial Tournament. One, but one year, I, um, I finished second, I think, one year, maybe in the 90s. And, um, you know, when you play a Jack Nicholas course, people say, oh, well, you need to hit the high fade uh, shots into the greens because that's the way he designed it. And I'm sure that's not true, but that's what we thought back then. So I decided this one week that I was going to hit the high fade every shot. And I was practicing away on the range and um, – on a Tuesday and next thing I know Jack Nicholas walked up behind me and he, he was still playing in the tournament and he and he, uh, he started watching me hit the ball and I was like oh my god this is too no anyway he said to me he said I was hitting the high fade he goes you're going to do really well this week with that shot and I finished up being second but he gave me all that confidence just by just by talking to me that day but oh I've just I've just been, you know, a big fan of the Nicholas family. Uh, Barbara Nicholas, of course, was our model for the ladies on tour. She had five children that she raised on the tour and no nannies, none of that stuff. We don't have any of daycare back in the day. And she made it look easy. So she, she was a great role model for all the wives at the time. So it's just a wonderful family. They're all, you know, he's got tons of grandkids and, and Jack's a real family man. And, you know, he was famous for only playing 15 events per year and going home and, and watching all of his kids do their sports and so on. So he was a great model all the way around. I don't think I've ever seen Jack lose his temper or swear at anyone. He's always been gracious. And, of course, he was the best player. And I'm looking at it through my set of eyes, which is, you know, he's the greatest. But, uh, you know, it was just my era. That was my guy. I like you talking about him being a family man because that always really came across. And, you know, another time where I saw that is when we were at the Masters this year and Sam, your son, was there. And he came straight up to Sam, wanted to have a conversation with him and see how his golf game's going too. Oh, yeah. Jack, uh, Sam knows Jack. And, of course, we play in the uh, father-son event every year in Florida. And, in fact, <laughs> I was at the Masters one year uh coming from a different location and I, I, I went to have my, get some coffee and I look up at the uh, crow's nest up there at the masters and <laughs> sitting up there having breakfast with Jack Nicholas. I'm like, Oh man, what a life. <laughs> what a life. That kid's living the dream. He's a big Jack guy. Now he's a big tiger woods guy. Sam is. Mm -hmm. And um, of course swings have been uh, different eras of swings. Uh, Jack used to take the club up high on the back swing, lift the left ankle off the ground and, and, and use more knees uh, on the through swing. Of course, Tiger came along and his swing spins a lot more with his hips. So two different eras, two different types of swings, but both very effective. So 
obviously, Jack Nicholas is your idol and the greatest of all time. But what has made him the greatest of all time? What is it about his swing? Well, to use a famous line in the 86 Masters, Diane, when he hit it stiff to the pin uh, on 16 and Vern Lundquist turned to Tom Weisskopf and said, what was he thinking on this shot? And Tom Weisskopf said, Vern, if I knew what he was thinking, he said, I wouldn't be sitting in this booth right now. <laughs> uh, I don't know what he, he's obviously the most uh, brainiac player we've ever had other than Tiger Woods. But, you know, when you talk about Jack swing, you know, he wasn't a great wedge player, um, great chipper of the ball, but he, he prided himself in being super strategist. He used to play a one on off the tee a lot, but his swing went more high, you know, went up with the left foot off the ground and uh, had more knee action through the ball. In fact, I think last year on the telecast, he said that he said a lot of these young players get injured a lot more because they spin their hips so much like Tiger's era. And um, I thought that was interesting, um, you know, perspective because swing, swing actions kind of follow uh, who's the best, right? And yep. I'm looking at my son here right now, Sam, hit the ball. He's a big Tiger guy. And um, those guys had a lot of speed in the hips and spun. You don't see the guys absolutely knock down the flags like you did in the old days. New school versus old school. That's right. And we'll be celebrating that idea with a few more tunes this week that I've got in my in my ditty bag with Calder and uh, and you'll be seeing some more. <laughs> so you touched on Tiger and Jack there. And Jack yep. was actually, he came out and it was in the news today that Jack said that Tiger needs to learn how to win again, that it's all between the ears. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think two things that came out of Nicholas's uh, press conference yesterday was one was while Tiger was away, uh, a lot of young guys came out and learned how to win. That was one. And then the other one was uh, he thinks Tiger can, wouldn't be surprised if he won this week, uh, thinks he can break his uh, major championship record and he needs to learn how to win again. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, if I was going to break that down, Tiger certainly knows how to win. He's won 70, 73 times in 14 majors. I think what he is, um, you know, to dive a little deeper into that from my perspective would be, just to learn how his body feels again under, you know, hitting the shots required under that sort of final two hours of a golf tournament. And that certainly is something that has to be, uh, you, you know, you just don't roll up and do that. You've got to sort of go through the fire a few times. I think he's, I think Tiger's done that enough to be ready now. Mm -hmm. um, he seems to uh, struggle at times with his tee ball a little bit, although I did see him hit the ball tee ball great at the Players' Championship, and I think we spoke about this the last time, was he, he should be feeling pretty good about that. But this week wouldn't surprise me. I mean, the course has gotten wet up there, so that means the, the, that's going to mean the fairways are wider which because it's soft and they're going to plug. So absolutely, Tiger could win the Memorial. So we've got eight of our Secret Golf guys in the field this week. And, of course, one of them is Jason Duffner, who won it last year. What's it going to take for Duff to come out and defend that title? Well, you know, I reminded him he's having a good season. You know, he finished second with Perez down in the, the Zurich in New Orleans. And then he finished, you know, right there at the Players' Championship. Uh, I reminded him uh, Sunday night when he missed the cut at Colonial last week that he missed the cut last year there as well and shot 14 under for the first two days. So a lot of times when I talk to my players uh, or our players, Diane, I'm reminding them, you know, most of the time how to keep it simple. You know, uh, we all get a little complicated with our thinking and, oh my gosh, I'm not going to play well because of this, or oh, I'm not going to play well because of that. But very, very rarely is it, is it a big problem for these guys. It's usually only one uh, alignment away. When I say alignment, it could be, you know, the shoulders may be too open or his stance could be too, so on. These guys are so, um, they're so good at what they do that when one alignment gets out, it's like a race car. It doesn't quite want to win the race. So, you know, keep it simple. Go back to the simple stuff, you know. Yeah. I think Jason will be fine. He's playing with Tiger this week. Yeah. And uh, he always gets super fired up playing with Tiger. He always performs really well playing with him. So he'll be on, he'll be on this week. 
you were talking about the players there. He finished, you know, right up the leaderboard. His putting came under fire. We spoke about that in a podcast a few weeks ago. And, you know, Jason even went on social media and said, guys, come on, like, focus on the good putts that I made, not the putts that I missed. Last year, he obviously putted phenomenally. And he spoke about this in his Secret Golf channel that putting is not the strongest point of his game. But, you know, it's all about the memories. He's going to have really good memories on these greens this week. Yeah, and, and of course, having a lot of experience at Memorial helps, right? But it also helps Tiger Moore. He's, I think he's won about six of them. So you do actually, Diane, remember what the putts do. In other words, uh, when you have a lot of experience on the tour, what the advantage over rookies is that you've played this course before. You know where to hit it off the tee. You know what to expect on a putt that's fast, that may not look fast, et cetera. So Jack's, Jack's tournament's always been a really tricky event you know it's a shame that they've they've had some weather and it's rained but uh nonetheless let's face it there's a lot of pga tour events but when jack runs his uh event there's just some that are better than others and nicholas's tournament is always uh a favorite of the of the tour players and that's that's always verified by who's playing and they're all there this week so I they really wanted Jack. I wanted to go this week. This is one tournament that I've never been to that I've always wanted to go to. I want to see the course, but I want to try the milkshakes. Everyone <laughs> tells me how good the milkshakes are at Memorial. <laughs> what, what is the deal? Well, you know, there's, it's not really my, my deal, but uh, <laughs> yeah, guys come in. They started in Denver was where the, the famous milkshake place was, but uh, Jack also has good milkshakes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think the the great thing about Muirfield is the crowd. They get so many people out there, Diane, to watch this tournament. Mm-hmm. So well attended. I don't know. It's hundreds of thousands of people. And these people from Ohio, when they go to a sporting event, they're there for the day. I mean, I've been up there when it's rained and there's people just walking around. They don't care. They just they just get soaking. They don't care. It's like Scotland, Diane. You, exactly. you people are so equipped. You're so equipped for the bad weather. You just go with it. And uh, it's it's awesome to get up in that part of the country. The people are so thankful for Jack mm-hmm. and his wife, Barbara, all the stuff they've done for charity. And they just, they just come out in big time crowds. Yeah, obviously Jack's from Ohio. Duffner is from Ohio as well. Not a lot of people know that because Duffner is so Auburn. And he's having a little, yeah, of course. And he's, he's having a little bit of, a, uh, you know, He's on a high right now because uh, the Cavaliers are in the finals of, mm-hmm. of the of the basketball. So Duff's, you know, told you so kind of guy right now. It's a little bit hard to be with right now because he told me <laughs> my Rockets were going to get knocked out. So a lot of people don't realize Jason's so dry and so humorous, but he, he doesn't come across that way on the course. But he loves to give the needle. So we're giving away these two tunes. Elk, you said that you've got one of them. There was only five that were created. Where do you keep yours in your house? Where is it hanging? Well, I don't hang all my tunes. I keep them in a in a very uh, big leather folder that I can like a like a picture album. So, um, you know, of course, Jason Duffner has a beautiful spiral staircase in his house that he has a tune on each step on the way down. So it's a it's a slow walk for us when we go to his house and enjoy all of his victories that he's had and all the tunes we've done for him. Of course, I'm sure Calder told you he's so easy to draw, right? He's a yeah. walking walking cartoon character. But Calder did say it's hard to get his facial expression right sometimes. I said, why? Because sometimes there's no expression in his face. <laughs> like he, he doesn't really <laughs> give a lot away, does he? No, he uh, he's pretty stoic. Uh, but as as... As you know, you've been around Jason. He's a very funny guy. He's, he's a very smart guy, very thoughtful. Um, he just he just stays pretty calm, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Right, Elk, thank you so much. You're out with Sam at Blue Jack right now, so we'll let you guys go and hit balls, and we will talk to you again next week. Thank you, Diane. Oh, I love hearing Elk talk about Mr. Nicholas because he's just his hero. He really is. And, you know, a lot of these golfers on the PGA Tour, let's be honest, all of them have grown up loving golf and idolising someone, saying, you know, one day I want to be like him, especially with Tiger back on tour. I'm sure a lot of the guys grew up just wanting to be Tiger Woods. So to hear Elk tell stories about Jack, I love hearing it. It actually gives me goosebumps. And I was lucky enough to be at the Masters with Elk this year. And Jack was standing right beside me and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't think I can act cool right now. And even Elk, you know him, they know each other. 
came straight over to Elk. They shook hands. They caught up. And I could just see the look of excitement in Elk's face. And it must be like, oh, my gosh, it's him. It's him. Anyway, so we have these two Toon posters to give away this week at Secret Golf. They're both of Duff and Jack Nicholas, and they've both been signed by the two men. They're very, very cool. And the pictures are on our Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. Just search for Secret Golf. Now, all you have to do, that's a little bit different for each social media channel, but starting with Instagram, go on to our Instagram at Secret Golf. And on one of the images that we have of the tunes, all you have to do is in the comments, tag one of your friends. Then make sure you're both following Secret Golf. And then there's a link in the bio. Click on that and that'll be you entered to win. On Twitter, just go to at Secret Golf on Twitter and retweet one of the comments with the tune posters. Again, mention one of your friends' Twitter names, the at whatever. Make sure you're both following Secret Golf and then click the link. That's all you have to do there. And the same on Facebook. Just share the post, put one of your friends in it, tag their name. And then again, just go to the little link. So I've made that sound way more complicated than it really is. But just go to whichever social media channel and we're posting about it every day this week so you can follow the instructions and hopefully you'll win this very exclusive, I was going to say limited edition, but these are the only two in the world that are left to give away. You know, Jack's got one, Duff's got one and Elk's got one. So imagine having this you would keep that forever and ever. I actually don't even want to give them away, but I will. And they could be coming to you. So as I said, two to give away could be going to you and one of the friends that you tag. And you can enter as many times as you like. Just make sure you tag a different friend each time. All the T's and C's are on the little website link that we give you as well. So you'll find everything you need to know there. Winner will be announced on Monday next week. We're going to do an Instagram live at one o'clock. So good luck. And the way that we're picking the winner, it'll be, you know, completely completely fair and random, but we're going to have a bit of fun with it too. So that'll be happening on Monday at one. Thank you so much for listening. I really enjoyed that. Great talking to Elk. Brilliant talking to Calder, our cartoonist as well. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll be back with another Secret Golf podcast next week. (laughs) 